Now, the story to get them here. Now, think if Ruth had not gone with her mother-in-law and not trusted and not seen something. There was something in Naomi that she saw in her relationship with God. If she had not committed uh, to, to follow the will of God, go back with her, uh, how her life would have been different, how history would have been different. But the Spirit of God's moving in her heart. She follows, she obeys, she goes back, God begins to move. Now, Obed would grow up and father a boy named Jesse, who would in turn have a son called David. Thus, a Moabite girl who was once heathen would become the great grandmother of King David and be included in the New Testament genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew 1, 5. And this is perhaps one of the most thrilling examples of God's marvelous grace in all the Bible. Uh, and Boaz's mother was Rahab. <laughs> wow. God's grace working. Uh, powerfully uh, in life. Now five times in the first two verses of chapter 4 we read about people sitting down. It was to be a deliberate and final transaction. So this was part of it. We're making a transaction here. We're making a deal. We're making, you know, it's, that's, that, the emphasis is about the sitting down. Uh, Boaz was to pay the price to redeem Ruth. When our Savior finished the work of redemption, the Bible says he sat down. He sat down. The transaction is complete. And that uh, he paid the price. See how it goes together? Why do we come to the New Testament and reads and then he sat down? What? 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 Why is it telling us that? Why well, it's going back to this? Because he has paid the price, save for our sins. Now Boaz planned the marriage privately, but paid the price publicly. The other kinsman was able to redeem, but not willing. He was afraid of harming his own inheritance. Jesus has made us a part of his inheritance, Ephesians 1, 11 through 14. What a contrast between chapters 1 and 2 and chapters 4. From tears to joy, from hard labor to rest, from emptiness to fullness, from fear to peace and assurance. And the thing that made the difference was obeying the Word of God. Obeying the Word of God. Will we obey? Will we walk in obedience and faith? When Ruth put herself at the feet of her Redeemer and trusted herself to him he took over and changed everything and that's what we have to do we got to put ourselves at jesus feet we have to uh, come to that place of trusting and obeying him now early on ruth made all she had was her faith and sometimes in life that's all we have we don't have the uh the answers to our faith we don't our the faith that we have hasn't culminated into uh that answer or into something happening, but we have our faith, right? You, you believe, you, you trust. Uh, in chapters 2, she was living on leftovers. Okay? So she's gleaning from others' fields. Uh, in chapter 3, she received generous gifts. But then she belonged to Boaz. Everything Boaz owned belonged to her. And Jesus says, everything I own belongs to you. Because he's our kinsman redeemer. See? He's our redeemer. God's marvelous grace in all the Bible. Even through the darkest days, even when people who are supposed to be God's people are not God's people, even when uh, God's uh, 
uh, the w ones who are supposed to be speaking on God's behalf as ambassadors for God and doing the work of God are, are sinful and uh, selfish and living in their own uh, debauchery and turned away from God. God still within that people, God still was working in, even within the nation and God still works. And this goes for a, a church of any size, and you know, somebody people could say it's, it's you could take a say a large size church, and maybe somebody in that church does God work in that church? God work in our church? You know, they could maybe point out this and that and that, but somewhere within the midst of that, God's working. Okay, God's doing something, and uh, sometimes He's doing it in, with people that. You would have never saw coming. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that uh, it's because of your grace, Lord. We'll just remember that, dear God. We get so tied up in so many things, Lord. We just need you to help us to walk by faith obedience, dear Lord. Just to begin the journey and travel and walk with you and hold your hand, Lord, as you, you carry us through and you carry us to Lord God, bless bless your people. Bless your people here today, Lord. Bless your people that study your word and study this book and know that we have a kinsman redeemer who not only redeems us and sits down, dear Lord, after paying the price for us, dear God, but also has given to us everything that belongs to you. Thank you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.